Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm back. This time, something a little different. Um, I've pretty much shown all of my metal vinyl over the years, and um, there's been some requests for this, so I'm going to start showing some of my non-metal vinyl. Because believe it or not, I listen to other things besides metal. And um, very much into other styles like uh, neo-folk, punk, hardcore, industrial, gothic. Um, dungeon synth. Uh, there'll be eventually a dungeon synth video coming. I just, you know, dungeon synth to me is one of those things that you put on in the background and it's soothing. I, I listen to it a lot when I'm working, but because it's such a, a wallpaper, it's in the background type of thing. It's hard for me to really glom on to which band is which. So I always feel I've always what's been the big delay with the dungeon synth video is the fact that I don't feel super um, uh, educated when it comes to um, talking about it. So a little out of my wheelhouse. But anyway, we're going to get into some non-metal stuff. I've got way more non-metal CDs than I do LP. So this series is not going to go that far unless I could carry it over into CDs. We'll see. But um, yes, if you listen to predominantly metal, maybe it would be good for you to try some other things. Um, helps recharge the battery, so to speak, and um, give you a different perspective to other musical genres. There's a lot of dark stuff out there, and that's usually the t stuff I gravitate towards, you know, dark music. doesn't matter if it's metal or gothic. Um, but having said that, metal has been the genre I've invested the most time and money and research into. So a lot of, you know, like industrial, I've got a lot of stuff by bands that are popular that have been, you know, well known over the years. So I've never really skirted into the underground of any of this stuff. But um, anyway, enough babbling. I'm going to get on showing some records here. First up, I've showed some of this stuff before, like this album, for instance. Blood and Sun with White Storms Fall. Blood and Sun is a U.S. neo-folk band, apocalyptic folk band, very much so influenced by the likes of um, Death in June and of the Wand in the Moon, that type of stuff. A lot of acoustic, I mean, the, the foundation of all of this is acoustic guitar. Uh, Hammer Dulcimer is on every song on this and it's adds a very beautiful element the hammer dulcimer on this was played by my friend tanner who you have probably have heard of he's in the band of sequiae um violin some minimal percussion very much a very strong very morose album here's the back this was put out by Pasanta Earthfolk before it folded and probably one of the reasons why it folded was because they put so much money into their into their productions. I mean this thing is like a hardcover book from the uh, library. It's got that uh, fabric type feel to it um, like a hard bound book. It's got gold emboss foil. Is it embossed? No it's just gold foil. The inside it comes with a CD and a parchment paper the booklet is very cool yeah my mic is in the way sorry it's attached to the inside amazing artwork Luke did Luke is an artist a very good artist he did not paint these though somebody he knows did the paintings for the inside of this very good Pr presentation the inside of the back so yeah if you're in stuff like death in june of the wand and the moon um i wish i could lay off lay off name off a list of bands that this sounds like but like i said my um knowledge of neo-folk is very minimal next up is one many of you have probably heard of or heard agnostic front with victim in pain this is a combat core pressing 1986 this is black on black this is like a reverse embossed cover very cool um i'm a big fan of agnostic front i really prefer the earlier stuff this actually is 
my favorite by them. Although I like a lot of their stuff, which I will be showing more of later as we go along. I've got some new vinyl up upstairs that I haven't documented yet that I will show. But, you know, this is hardcore, but I think a lot of metalheads really appreciated it because it does have a hard edge to it. Awesome album. Next up is Cat Rapes Dog with Maximum Overdrive. Cat Rapes. This album came out in 89 on KK Records. Um, these guys are an industrial band from Sweden. Um, honestly, this album, the first side, if I remember, it's been a while since I've listened to it, but the side one is kind of boring. Side two picks up the pace a bit more. It's um, <clears throat> listed on Wikipedia is a uh, EDM mixed with metal. There's no metal on this. It's all electronic and it's all right. It's um, an album I acquired somewhere secondhand and listened to a few times. It's like I said, not the most exciting album I own. Next up, Circle Jerks. Wonderful. This is the only Circle Jerks I own, which is kind of weird on Combat Core. I enjoy the Circle Jerks. Um, to say that I prefer Off, which is a band that Keith is in uh, in now a days. They put out three or four records and a bunch of seven inches. A lot more. It's very much a Circle Jerks inspired band, but there's a lot more piss and vinegar in it. This stuff here is really polished. I do enjoy these guys, though. It's happy punk with good social political lyrics and keith morris was the original singer of black flag i'm sure most of you know that like i said i'm out of my wheelhouse on a lot of this stuff i like a lot of this stuff but i never really invested as much time into getting to know the ins and outs of it as i have metal over the years but next up are a couple singles by the cocteau twins this is a uh, sunburst and snowblind I spent way too much money on these. These are singles. This is a four song EP on 480. It's probably why I paid a lot for it because it's on 480. Um, I couldn't even tell you the era that this came out, what album this came out on. But um, Cocteau Twins, very much. Their first album is my favorite and I couldn't even tell you the name of it right now. It, it's almost like black metal minus the metal and with very ethereal um, lady vocals. This is good. This is also good. But again, I paid way too much money for it. This is the uh, this is a three song EP made in England 480 records. I've listened to each of these maybe twice. I kind of wish I bought full lengths instead of these, but I think out of all the stuff they had, these were the cheapest. Um, God. The songs on this were The Spangle Maker, uh, Pearly Dew Drops, Drops, and Pepper Tree. Um, does not say which album it came off of, but it's a good single. Good band. I got one more to show you here. Again, I wish I could like just fucking delve into the history for you and give you all sorts of little snippets of information but this is Cocteau Twins with Bluebeard three, another three song EP this is a gatefold actually which I can't believe a record label would put in so much money into a three song um, EP but this is on Fontana Records this has got Bluebird Three Swept and Ice Pulse on it Again, yeah, we've got an artistic vision for this three-song single. We want Gatefold. Uh, <laughs> okay. Here, take all my money. Yeah, I get it. It's limited edition. It's cool. Oh, the first one, I should have said what songs were on it. It's got Sugar Hiccup from the Flagstones, Hither 2, and Because of Whirljack. If you're into stuff like Susie and the Banshees, um, early, earlier Susie and the Banshees, 
and whatnot, definitely check out Cocteau Twins. Like I said, their first album, really, really good, um, atmospheric, weird, black metal minus the metal, <laughs> if that makes any sense. This I've showed before. This is a really good um, EP. This is Songs from the Grinding Wall by Controlled Bleeding. It's got Crack the Body, Rings of Fire, a Crow the groan and buried blessing this is on wax tracks this is a duo do you remember the band skin chamber if you're a metal guy skin chamber basically is control bleeding it's just a more metalized project of control bleeding control bleeding is all electronic and it is like the song crack the body it's very warped sounding and demented um can't remember what the fucking guy's name paul lamos now one of the guys in here is a professor but anyway these guys got a pretty vast um catalog but this album is just sick downtrodden twisted sounding industrial music i know control bleeding kind of um drifted off into other i mean there'd be one album that sounds this way another album that was a completely different shift but this is right up my alley. Really dark, fucked up sounding industrial. Um, like I said, if you've heard of the band Skin Chamber, the, the one album I have by them is called Wound, which I don't love, but it's good. It's industrialized metal. That is basically controlled bleeding, but a more metalized version. So if you're into that stuff, definitely check these guys out. Awesome, awesome release. Next up is, this is a fucking classic, Dead Can Dance, self-titled debut album. This is also on 480. I probably paid way too much for this too. Well, I only paid nine dollars for it. But um, this is their first album and sounds completely different than the rest of their catalog. Panned out to be, I think, as this band went on, they got more um, world music influenced, which is fine. I mean, I love. There's only one album by them that I've heard. I haven't heard the new one yet. Um, there's one album of theirs, Star Chaser. I didn't like that album, but the rest of them, uh, very good. Even though it's world music influence, this here is more um, of a dark alternative mix. Um, it's fucking great. It's like really obscure alternative music with a very dark edge. Dead Can Dance, check out their first album. It's fucking awesome. Next up, this is another, nope, this isn't. This is on Carlisle Records. This is Dessau with Isolation. Another industrial-ish band, Isolation. This is a... Isolation is a cover of a Joy Division song, Isolation. So they basically put out a three-song single with Isolation being the lead-off track. It also has Crowfest and... Oh, it's just two songs, one on each side, Isolation and Crowfest. Two-song single... It's actually a very good cover of a Joy Division song, electronic, dark, um, industrialized version of it. I wish I could sit here and, and wax poetic about the history of Dessau. I've heard some other other stuff. It's good. This is really good. I'm very glad I have this single because I'm a huge Joy Division fan. If you're not into Joy Division, we'll get there later. We'll talk about that later. This this here, these next two could have been in the metal section, but they're they're not. Um, Dirty Rotten Imbeciles with Dealing With It. This is my favorite DRI album. Um, it doesn't have the extreme hyper speed of the early album. This is more refined. This is more crossover. Um, actually, the album after this crossover, everybody touts that as like an amazing crossover album. I fucking hate that record. I think that record is completely boring. This here, I mean, songs like Couch Slouch, um, stupid, stupid war, counterattack. Uh, I don't need society. Slip my wrist. So much fury and fire on this record. I love it. This is an, a fucking perfect album. This is on Death Records. I got this for two ninety nine back in the day, and it's in great fucking shape. Um, I mean, I shouldn't have to talk too much about DRI. I should know what it's all about. Uh, next up is probably the last DRI album that I liked and this is four of a kind I got this one for $2.99 as well I miss Newman Records man that was the place in town I've talked about them before um, Bob Seeger's manager owned this record store 
And I had a friend that worked there. And anytime there would be a huge batch of records come in, used records, he'd call me and he's like, yeah, they bought a big stack of used metal records. You might want to come. I'll hold them for you before I put them out. And um, the guy's Mike's wife didn't, Teresa was her name. She didn't know what any of this stuff was. So she priced it all at one, two, three, four, ninety nine. Because she didn't know, oh, honey, you just take it. Cool. But anyway, this is a pretty metalized record for DRI. Um, it's been a long time since I've listened to this album, but it's really good, man. Slumlord, uh, Do the Dream, Manifest Destiny, was Blood on the Hands of Christ. Oh, so good. Um, this is a good record. This is the last record of theirs I liked. And DRI, for me, they've had their moment, man. And they put themselves on the map for a reason, but they put out a lot of garbage over the years. I think a lot of garbage. Anyway, next up, this is an album that is very influential and very awesome, and it's on Clay Records. This is Discharge with Hear Nothing, See Nothing, Say Nothing. Is this a faithful? It is. These guys are the godfathers of D-beat, punk, and hardcore. And this is a great record. I also had the record um, that came out after this. I wish I could remember the name of it, but it was their glam metal record, which after you hear this, this is just mean, straightforward, D-beat, pissed off, drunk as fuck punk, slash hardcore, I guess. But um, the album, what the fuck was the name of that album? They had their hair all like, they looked like a glam band. It was fucking terrible. I gave it to some friends of mine who actually love that record. Even though they know of the history, it's not like they're like, oh, we're fans of glam metal. I mean, it wasn't straight up glam, but it was really teetering on the brink of that. But this record is a fucking complete classic. And if you're into this style, I mean, this is, as far as this style goes, the heart of England, as far as I'm concerned, along with other bands I'm going to talk about here, including this one. Um, I got this one pretty cheap in Grand Rapids at Vertigo Records. And this is Doom, Lost the Fight, Pro-Life Control Sessions. Um, 16 songs. This contains um, a split, tracks from a split 7-inch EP with Hiatus from 1993 and a split album with Selfish from 1994. Uh, this is on Agipunk, who have also put out stuff by Prophecy of Doom in the past which is another fucking great British band. But this is fucking awesome. Are these British? Or are these guys Italian? <laughs> Jason Hook, I need you. I wish I had like a direct link. That you could like like pop in on my fucking video. No, Marty, you're stupid. It's this, 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 and this. I'm like, okay, thanks, Jason. Then you like go away. One of these days, I'll figure it out. But this is good shit. Next up. Oh, yeah. I'm a big fan. Exploited. This is Troops of Tomorrow. Am I right? Troops of Tomorrow. This is their first album. And I'm believing this is a reissue. This is on Drastic Records. Out of Omaha, Nebraska. So yeah, I'm assuming that this is a complete. This is the first exploited record. You know, it's got Jimmy Boyle, Daily News, USA, Rapist, Troops of Tomorrow. Sid Vicious was in Innocent, Germs, UK82. It's great. Um, you listen to this shit and it just sounds so <laughs> impoverished. <laughs> like these dudes were living in the fucking sewer and they'd crawl out, scrape the crust off and go into the studio. And I, oh, I, fuck you. Here we go. Um, great UK hardcore punk. Big fan of it. The Exploited, GBH, all that stuff. I was, for the longest time, more of a UK punk fan than a USA punk fan, but that has changed over the years. I'm still... I like both both scenes. I know Waddy's kind of a shithead, but his uh, fire really cuts through on his records. And we're going to keep going with this. We got Let's Start a War. Said Maggie one day. I actually re acquired this recently from Ron from uh, um, Pagan Flames. He got rid of some stuff in his collection. Friends of Ben's, Brain Smasher. He's been on his show before, uh, the two of them doing shows together. But 
this is probably my favorite exploited record. I also like horror epics, but I don't have that on vinyl, do I? No. No. My screensaver turned on. There we go. Classic. UK. Filthy. Dirty Punk. Love it. Next up is the Jesus is Dead EP. Always like this one. I got this for $2.99 at Full Moon Records. This has got Drug Squad Man, Privacy Invasion, Jesus is Dead, and Politicians. Look at those fashionable crusts. Awesome stuff. Love the Exploited. Once they started getting more thrashy and metalized, believe it or not, I kind of stopped caring. I kind of liked them being just shitty punk. But, you know, they still put out some good stuff over the years. Um, this is a single. I don't know where the fuck this came from. Dead Cities, Punk's Not Dead, Army Life, and Barmy Army. This is on Archive 4. Uh, yeah, Castle Communications. This is a weird single. Limited to 5,000. I got this at a record show in Traverse City, believe it or not. Had to snatch it up. Again, can't have enough exploited. This is the last exploited. No, I actually have some other stuff on tape and stuff. But I really like this record too, even though they pretty much went full in on metal, thrash metal with this. Death Wits for Dishonor. It's on Combat Rough Justice, which was the offshoot, more punk offshoot for the combat shit, I guess. But um, this is a great record. I fucking love the cover artwork. Um... Died for what? What do we got on here? Annie UK. Drive Me Insane. Death for Dishonor. No Forgiveness. This is a great record. And this is actually, I'm going to contradict myself. This is a good metalized, exploited record. I'm sure there's more. I haven't investigated much past this. I have War Now and some other stuff, some live stuff on cassette. But again, exploited fan had to have this. Okay, this is the last one. I've listened to this a couple times. I might have shown this before, but my friends uh, Jack and Joel were both from the uh, Detroit area, Ferndale area of Michigan. They got married, and their record collections combined. They each owned this record, so they gave me one of them. This is uh, Feast or Famine and Social Outcast Split 12-inch. Very noisy, fucking sloppy hardcore um it's on oh boy battle cry records from clinton township michigan i believe it's a gatefold yes split lp ferocious nasty sounding it's really good check out that double collage how fucking good is that I would just throw this out there and say that both these bands are from Michigan, but I don't fucking know. That might be a stupid thing to say, but, um, and I wish I've listened to this enough to tell you that I know it exactly other than I've listened to it like two or three times and liked it. And it was very much a fierce, um, fierce attack of hardcore D beat fueled, uh, a lot of aggression, but yes, feast or famine and, social outcast but that's it this is the first uh first installment of this video i'm gonna get into it next edition is gonna have some stuff that's very near to my heart and um you know chime in if you know much about this stuff you have any you know, clear up some of my inconsistencies of information that'd be great it was great to be with you guys again and i hope you're all doing well and i'll see you in the next video hey subscribe if you feel like it been seeing the numbers come up lately, which is pretty cool. I need to figure out that contest. I need to sit down and figure out what the fuck I'm giving away. But anyway, thanks a lot. It was good seeing you guys. Appreciate all the comments and support. Take care.